Hello everyone, this is Bacholi with Archeon. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate a few tips and tricks with power in cables. The solar sensor and the hinge are directly compatible with each other. If I put a solar sensor here with the plus on the right and a hinge in the same way, then it will make it so that the hinge will turn towards the sun. If I put a solar panel on top and wire up the hinge to the solar sensor, it will point towards the sun. RTG's efficiency is directly proportional to their ability to cool down. This means that putting them underwater improves their production. RTGs can be chained in series to increase the total output power. In this example, a power converter is connected to the last one in the chain and it charges the high voltage battery. And here, if we hit V on the last one, we can see that the actual output power is a lot greater than the potential generated power of that single RTG. Only the last one in the chain will display the actual output power. Solar panels can also be chained in the same way, but they cannot be chained together with RTGs. Power junctions do split power. What that means is, for instance, the low voltage battery can output up to 50 kilowatts per port. So if you connect it to the input of a power junction here, a low voltage junction, then the number of connected things doesn't matter if they're on or not, but the number of connected low voltage cables will determine how it splits the power. So if you give it 50 kilowatts available power, it will only have an output of maximum 25 kilowatts each. Let's say you have an empty high voltage battery here and 12 low voltage batteries that are full. You can technically bring all the charge from that stack into this high voltage battery to fill it to 100%. But how do you do that? Problem is the power converter here is both ways. So the, the high voltage battery will also be able to charge the low voltage stack and the power will simply equalize with all battery at 50%. So how do you do this? Well, you can use a junction. This will enforce the power to only go one way. This way, you're gonna empty this stack to charge this high voltage battery all the way to 100%. Similarly, you can use that to transfer power from one battery to the other using two power converters. The reason for the two power converters is you need to boost the voltage back to the full potential voltage of the battery. Cables can be snapped to other components as well as blocks. But how do you do this instead of having them try to connect to the connectors? Well, you hold shift, of course, and you can snap it around until you release shift to connect it. Let's say you want to snap your cable here, but you don't want it to go through the battery. You can always use the mouse wheel to select the next pathfinding. Let's say you don't like these 90 degree turns that the cables do. Well, you've seen these flexible cables that you can attach between two vehicles. But what if you want that within the same build? How do you do that? Well, you can hold X like this. And then you're making a flexible cable run along the same build. However, it's worth noting that each segment of these cables do compute the gravity and collision with the ground, so it might be quite taxing on your CPU if you put too many of them in your vehicles. However, these straight 90 degree cables are basically free in terms of performance. You can put as many as you want and you won't see any performance drop. Flexible cables can also be used for cranes and towing. I'll just let your imagination go wild with that one. That will be it for this video. I'll see you in the next one.